Hi there Titans, my name is Paige and today I'm going to show you the button element in Titan Web. So to add a button to your web project, you can go to the plus sign right here, then go to button, and here you can choose between a primary and a secondary button. Now the only difference between these two buttons is the styling and colors that are shown right here. And so you can change the coloring and style of your two buttons and then choose which um, color scheme to use at different points in your web project. So I'm going to drag and drop my button into my web project and then going right to left I will show you all of these buttons and what they do to configure our style and um, integrations of our button. So of course the first button here is going to delete my button. I'm not going to click that. Um, because I still want to work with it, but um, that is how you can delete your button or any other element that you have selected. Here is the settings wheel for your button. This is where most of your configurations will happen. So you can change what the name of your button is right here. So save contact, call it that. And then you can add a user clip, user tip here. It's just going to be like a little hover um, pop-up that will show the end user what that button does. So maybe I can say um, click to save contact and then I can choose to disable my button if I'd like. So it's still able to be seen but it's unable to be clicked and you can use this and your web project for times where you don't want you know, your button to be able to be clicked and then you can enable it later on under certain criteria if you'd like. Next, let's go to interactivity. Hide unload is similar to disable except that they will not be able to see it at all when the form is loaded. And then you can show the button um, when certain criteria is met if you'd like. Confirmation message. So this is a way to um, certify that the end user really wanted to click that button and activate the actions behind that button before the actions take place. So you can give it a title if you'd like. This is the text message for what it will show. And then if they click yes, then um, whatever the actions are on that button will take place. And then no, it will just you know close out the button, uh, close out this message, and then they could make changes if they'd like. So. This is just a confirmation message before the actions take place. Inline progress is a cool feature that will show the end user that the button was clicked and that um, the actions behind the button are processing. So as the actions are processing, the button will show sending and then you can also have it have a icon if you'd like. So maybe I can do this like star half. And then once it's finished, then it will display this message on the, the button, which could be cool because then the end user will know that the contact was saved and that they've already clicked that button if you'd like. Um, call this one check. It looks cool. And so these icons will display to the left of the messages right here. Okay, then there's tab order, which is the order of which you know, if someone was clicking tab, what order it would come in. Then there's the hover modal, which is a modal, so you can choose a modal. I already have created one, and that will show when the end user hovers over the modal, and then you can set up actions that happen whenever it's hidden and when it's shown, if you'd like. And then configure on-click action. This is definitely the most important part of your button because you can define what happens when the end user clicks on your button. So you can do this through classic conditions where you can set system actions. There's lots of different system actions, Salesforce actions, you can affect different elements, or you can do all of these things in action flows as well, but it's going to be a more visual way of, um, of um, implementing this. So I can have my Salesforce action start go first, do like this and you can see my node and then after it's finished I can have it go to the next page nice and you know I can also you know have lots of other actions that take place 
whenever the user clicks this button. And I like action flows because I'm able to see the um, order of which all my actions happen. And I can also, you know, move them around if I'd like. I can switch them up if I like. And it also helps with uh, troubleshooting any errors that you may come across. All right, so that is how you configure your on-click action. You can also see where um, this button is affected or used in conditions. The animation is how it appears on the screen, how it moves, if you'd like. And then metadata is how you can like tag your, your button if you'd like, add a comment, tab index, your choice. So this button here, whenever you see this, this stands for like the styling of the element. So when I click here, default is what it looks like when the button is not being interacted with. Hover is how it looks when you hover over the icon or the button. And then click is what happens as you click it. So you can see, um, you can change the font, the fill, position, everything about the button can be edited and then it will also be edited for whenever it's hovered over and clicked. You can also um, change it to a primary or secondary button here if you like to switch between the two very quickly. You can change the font and this is only changing the font for the default. So you can see as I hover over the font got bigger and that's because I changed it but it only is being changed for the default um, settings. Here I can change the uh, font style. Now this button here is just a it's a shortcut to get to your on-click actions. So if you wanted to get to your on-click on -click actions <laughs> instead of going to settings and then going to interactivity you can just click here and then it'll take you directly to your on-click action settings. This button here will move the location of the button. Of course, you can drag it wherever you'd like, but if you want to make sure that it's centered with your strip, then you can click that. Oh, whoops. Or you can make it go all the way left or all the way right. This here will be the radius of the edges of your button. So if you want it to be square, you would do it. You can set the radius to zero. Then you have a square button. Of course, you need to make sure that you set it for the hover as well. Here is um, if you want to add a blur or a spread to your button, you can do that. So I'll show you what a blur looks like. You can see the blur. Here's a spread. And then you can change the location of the blur and the spread. Um, based on Y and X to the button. So if I were to do 100 this way, it goes down. If I do 100 this way, it goes like this. And then I can change the color too if I'd like. So all options that you have with your button. Here I can change the color of my font, the color of my outline, and the color of my fill. So that is everything to do with the button element. I hope that this video helped and that you have a wonderful time using buttons in Titan Web. Thank you for watching.